Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel and another episode of Stadiums That Inspire. First off, I want to say thank you so much for all the support. I just hit 500 subscribers, which is way beyond what I thought was even possible when I started making these videos. We got another great episode for you today, including 10 stadiums. So let's kick things off with a familiar creator we all know as Carmen's Dad. All right, this time Carmen's Dad is bringing us to Music City Field in Nashville, Tennessee. As we all know by now, his builds are always clean, elaborate, and very detailed. This field is no exception to that, and I had a lot of fun poking around in this stadium. He has a lot of really great features in this one, including custom scoreboards, Hall of Fame centers, and some really nice bleacher sections, so let's jump right into Music City Field. Let's start off in the Gilliam corner where he's used the target field anomaly to really pull the corner together and complete the concourse that leads to these custom bleachers. These have a really nice clean look below the All-Star Pavilion, and it also sits right below this great custom scoreboard complete with music notes coming from the guitar. In center field we get a great look at that concert stage right above the Hall of Fame Center that includes retired numbers, a small plaza for eating at, and a hill next to the batter's eye to watch the game from. We can also really see what a difference the standing room only fans make in this game. They can really bring life to parts of the park that would otherwise look dead or abandoned. I really love this custom upper deck section, complete with tons of seating under the video board and even a couple smaller areas off to the side and the one on top has cabanas to hang out in. Time to flip the lights on and get our shots at night. Once again, Karma's Dad has created another masterpiece but I wouldn't expect anything less from them. This park's always give me a lot of new ideas and things to try and I hope you guys can get some inspiration from this park and this series as well. Thanks again for another great park Karma's Dad and I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Up next we have another returning creator which we've featured a few times in the past. His parks are always bringing in some fresh ideas and it's always fun to pick his stadiums apart. He's built an entire district of stadiums in this one, so let's take a look at Chase Sports Complex by none other than Sandman Dan. This stadium, and entire complex for that matter, is pretty impressive and looks like a really cool area to visit for going to any sporting event. The baseball stadium has some pretty cool areas to it, and he's used some props for unintended purposes to create whole new ideas, so let's take a look. Starting off way up in left field, we get a plaza built into the side of a nearby building. I really like any idea where you can break up the upper deck sections and make it look this good. It really adds a unique look to your ballpark. Down below in left center, he's used the wiffle ball park to create a multi-level plaza, which I think is such a great idea. He's even got field level seating and concessions right below that to view the game from a very cool perspective. And in the last episode when I talked about signature moves, field level dining has to be one of his. He's tied the corner together very nicely with some bleachers, but the real star of this area has to be that awesome waterfall and nature section. It makes me wonder if that water is reachable with a home run. Time to flip the lights on again, and the views from upper deck are fantastic. We get a great look at the water feature and the other stadiums in the complex. I also love the custom logo he's made on the buildings. Let's get one last overview of the entire complex at night. Sam Mandane has brought us another stadium to admire, and I know a few more of his are ready to go in for future episodes. If you haven't seen any of his other parks, be sure to look him up in the vault, or I have shown a few of his other creations in previous episodes if you're new to the channel. Thanks again, Dan. Alright, let's switch things up to a creator we haven't seen before. He sent me a couple parks, so I picked this one to start with, and it looks very cool. It's got that old school vibe, but you can tell it's gone through some upgrades over the years. He said it started as a university's ballpark, but when they lost the funding, it transformed into first a spring training park for the Giants, and then eventually becoming home to an expansion team in the majors for a new team in Hawaii. This is the final product, which is called Cyclone Field New, and it's home to the Cyclones. This comes to us from Pfizer VV in Honolulu, Hawaii. It holds a bit over 27,000 fans and it has some great ocean views from throughout the ballpark. He's built a really nice clubhouse which we'll take a look at in a minute, and for you Splash Home Run fans, look no further. Let's kick things off behind the ballpark on the back side of the concourse. He's got a really awesome looking clubhouse and it has a restaurant and lounge area up on top of the roof. I really like how clean he made this look with all the props coming together nicely. The concourse continues down left field and we get a great view of Honolulu in the background and a couple of nice concession stands along the ocean view walkway. I really like the scoreboard and use of shipping containers. 
Right field features two decks, and the upper deck is much larger than the lower one, which we don't see too often. He's also included some really nice architecture by flipping the Tiger's Batter Eye anomaly around so we can only see the back side of it. Let's get a couple shots of this park at night. This looks like a pretty cool park to watch the game from with all the ocean views. It's too bad SDS doesn't light up those windows on most of the buildings at night or that Honolulu coastline would look just as fantastic at night as well as it does in the daytime. Thanks again Pfizer VV for this cool stadium and I have another one of yours queued up for a future episode. Be sure to keep building stadiums and let me know if you have any other parks you'd like me to showcase. Also, if you have a stadium you'd like to submit, leave it in the comments with your username or click the link in the description below. Let's introduce another creator which we haven't seen before. This is a minor league ballpark which I'd actually like to see a lot more of. If you've heard of the new series I'm starting called Stadium Creator Showdown, you'll know challenge one is to submit your best minor league ballpark. This stadium comes to us from Original Alex 819 and is called Double A Riverfront Stadium. This minor league park is set in Wichita, Kansas, and like it says, the name is right on the river. It only holds about 8,000 fans, but I'm sure you could squeeze in a few more on the hills if you had more memory to work with. This is a nice little park, so let's take a quick tour. Starting off, I can't imagine how long it took or how many pieces it took to make that hill. One thing I really like about it though is how much steeper it is than the prop it gave us in-game. They did a really nice job on the custom ball pins in the outfield, and I like the plazas with the picnic seating, which is something you tend to see a lot of in minor league ballparks. They've also got some great views beyond the park of the river with the bridge in the background and some parking lots surrounding the area. Let's end this thing like usual with the lights on. This is a good example of a simple yet very nice looking small ballpark. I did find one more park from him in the vault, but feel free to send me any more if you have them. The next park that I had made myself is also a minor league park, but it's a recreation that I did by request, so watch out for that one in the next few days. Speaking of mixing it up, grab your passports because we're headed to a retractable dome in Vancouver, Canada. It's been a while since we've seen one of these, so let's get started and dive right in. This is Vancouver V-Dome and is brought to you by Swanstew71. This is yet another new creator which we haven't featured on this channel, but I'm glad he's joining us and starting off with a dome is no easy feat to pull off, but he executed it very nicely and with some interesting features to boot. The left field corner has a custom ball pen and features one of our favorite things, a place for your home runs to have a splash landing. Not something you'd think of in domes, but right above that he's built the aptly named Splash Bar, which looks very cool. If you're like me and didn't want to leave the ballpark after the game has ended, Swan Stew has you covered as he has featured a hotel in center field. If you are near the right corner and hunger strikes, you're in luck. There are a ton of food options at the food court over here. Down the right field line, we get another look at a custom bullpen that he has created, this one on the other side of the park. Behind home plate looks awesome with all the windows and suites at the very top. I've only ever made one attempt at a retractable roof stadium, but this park makes me want to give it another shot. I also like that it uses synthetic turf with no grass pattern on it as well. This kind of reminds me of going to games as a kid when I grew up in Minnesota and went to a lot of games at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome with my dad. Although that wasn't a retractable roof either, we always had a good time. Thanks again for the submission, Stu, and make sure to send me more if you have them. Next up, we have another new creator and another sponsored field name. This one has one of the most hilarious and cool features I've seen in a park too, so let's get into this one. This is Zillow.com Stadium, and it's brought to us by T Snizzle 29 Right away, we get a skyline view of downtown Seattle complete with the Space Needle and a quick peek at the feature I was talking about. Did you catch it? Right on the concourse, we have a nice park and some vendors, but your eyes immediately drawn to the whale enclosure, which when I first saw it, I thought it was pretty cool, but then I noticed this. There are windows into the tank on the left field wall. When I first saw this, I couldn't stop laughing and thought it was such a unique idea. Right field also has windows, but these just have some fans in them. The right field corner features four fountains and those lead back to the team's Hall of Fame Center where you can view their team's legends of the past seasons. Let's view this park with the lights off. And the lighting looks great. They even have the plaza lit up very nicely so you can see the whales and the nice park in the center of the plaza. 
I love the unique features with the whales in this park, and I like the concourse that goes all the way around the outfield walls. This gives me an idea for a center field park that I might use in my next stadium creation, although after seeing Sam and Dan's latest build on Phil's channel, I'd have a lot to live up to. Thanks again, T. Snizzle, for this creative stadium. Our next stadium comes to us from BravesFan112296, and they've sent me a beautiful stadium called Akmulji River Park. Parks on the river have really inadvertently become a theme in this episode today. This is going to be Braves fans' first appearance on this channel, but I have seen this park on Phil's channel as well. Phil's really got a knack of showing off stadiums as I'm editing my videos with them in it, but I don't mind because sometimes he'll cover things that I may have missed my first time checking out a park. Anyway, this park is in Macon, Georgia, so let's get a good look at it. Starting off, your eye has to be immediately drawn to the waterfalls, but you don't want to miss this great looking plaza with a baseball statue above them. Then of course, the main feature of this park has to be the fountains. It always looks great when you go the extra mile to decorate them like they've done here. Right Field has a really nice looking scoreboard and it really pops with the white tile facing they've placed behind it and it gives it more of a modern feel and look to it. I also really like the small advertising just off to the side. Let's flip the lights off and take the drone for a spin around the park starting underneath the scoreboard. I really like the two extra video boards on the roof of the stadium behind home. This is an excellent looking park and the views sure don't disappoint. Great work on the concourse and all the theming they've done with the waterfalls. I also really like the backdrop of the Riverside Park as well. I'm also really glad to see that we are getting so many new creators submitting stadiums as we are getting a lot of ideas and a lot of fresh looks at some new ballparks. I am still hoping SDS puts out a new update soon that includes some more props and features. From what I heard last year, they did it about a month after the game released, so fingers crossed we'll see another update soon. Alright guys, in light of the Royals being one of four teams with rumors of getting new ballparks, this is a great time to show off Royals 3.0 by WiseGuy67, another new and hopefully future returning creator to the channel. They've started off their debut strong with the stadium set in Kansas City, Missouri, so let's get a deeper look at it. Like I said before, this is built for the Kansas City Royals, which we haven't seen too many parks for. That might actually be a great idea for a future challenge in the Stadium Crater Showdown series. This park holds just under 25,000 fans, but balls will fly out of this max elevation park. And to me, it seems like they go even further than last year's game. Left field looks fantastic with sections of bleachers complete with a restaurant and covered bars. I also really like the area beyond the stands with the water and the park across the road. How can you not have a Royals Park without the classic crowned video board? He did a nice job with the foliage and walls surrounding the area as well. Another feature that made it from Kaufman is the classic fountains, but here we see a much smaller one. We also get a nice picnic seating area behind the fountain and we get a couple levels of vendors to grab some food from. There is also a couple nice looking statues next to the retired numbers and some benches to watch the game from. They've also made really nice use of the grass hill prop too. Time to check the lighting at night and it looks like they've got it covered. This is a great looking modern stadium and I really like the limited number of outfield seats that we're starting to see more and more like in the newer builds in real life. I also like how they have vendors going all the way around their stadium and the elevated roof is a nice touch. Even though this is built for the Royals, it seems like it could be repurposed for a franchise with Tampa Bay to get them out of Tropicana Field and playing outdoors like baseball was meant to be played. Nice job, wise guy. I know I have a couple more of your parks lined up for future episodes as well. Alright, looks like we're going to check all the boxes for stadium types in this episode as our next one is a fully enclosed dome. This is Walmart Park and it's coming to us from Sundry Goose 1475. It's their first stadium on this channel, so let's take a look at it starting behind the plate. Located in Providence, Rhode Island, this dome holds a bit over 23,000 fans, sits at an elevation of only one foot, and has some very interesting design elements to it with a nice garden behind the batter's eye and some interesting targets to try and hit with home runs. In left field, the bleacher and outfield sections have a very one-of-a-kind shape, and just above them we get a huge food court with a lot of choices to satisfy your appetite. It's almost like a small city, and there's even a team store in the back. In center field, we get a great garden and plaza area with a few more concession stands, and you can even win a car if you hit it with a home run. There's also a casino hidden behind those tall trees in the back if you're feeling lucky at the game. 
Since this is a dome, the lights have been on the whole time. They provided a ton of lighting to keep everything in sight and they arranged the lights very nicely and realistically, rather than just throwing the lights in some odd places. I really like that the lowest deck is the smallest as the way they have it set up gets more fans a lot closer to the action. Great job on this one, Goose, and be sure to send me more when you build them. For our last stadium, we got a throwback one, and it shouldn't take too long to guess who built this one, as these are definitely their specialty. He always takes the time to make completely custom stands out of those bleachers props, which can be very time consuming. He always has great attention to detail, great exteriors, and really submersive builds. This is MLB 24 Ripwood Field by none other than Archmage Chemish. I believe he built this in the show 23 and then updated it, hence the name MLB 24 being the updated version. This part comes to us from 1948 in Birmingham, Alabama and can hold a bit over 10,000 fans. Left field looks great with some smaller sections of bleachers and an old school scoreboard. I wonder if you can hit that parking lot with a home run. Center has some very similar characteristics. I love the background with the tracks and the bank just before the river. It's got a great attention to detail, and I love the extra equipment there in the open section. Over and right, we see some more bleachers, and he used the new bleacher prop at the top. I also like how he used concrete to make a custom roof, and I love the scoreboard that sits in front of those small concession stands to act as advertising. That's a great idea, Arch. I might have to steal that one. Behind home looks very clean, and I love how he always has those openings for fans to come through and get to their seats. Time to flip the lights on and the view from behind home definitely makes you feel like you've gone back in time. This part seems like one that would be a good fit for a movie about baseball back in the 1950s. I always enjoy looking at Arch's builds and I know I have a bunch more on my list to show in future episodes of Stadiums That Inspire. Let's get a quick look at the entrance and overview the field one last time before we wrap things up on this episode. Awesome job Arch, I love the small town baseball field here and the surrounding rural area included as well. Just one last reminder guys, if you want a stadium showcase, be sure to click the link in the description below or leave your park name and your username in the comments. And with that, that's going to be a wrap on this episode of Stadiums That Inspire. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out these great parks with me. And thank you for all the continued support and feedback. It really does mean a lot to me and I really enjoy talking to you guys in the comments. As always, take care guys and I hope to see you in the next one.